I got a fantastic direct message over on Instagram. By the way, I'm Ham Radio Crash Course over there too. You can find me and ask me questions if you'd like. Uh, but join the Discord. The link is in the description if you'd like immediate responses to many of your amateur radio questions. They asked me if they were going to future-proof a purchase of a radio, what would be my recommendation? And a bit of a caveat, they are in Australia, and their license, I think, prohibits them from going above 20 watts of power output. So I, um, I looked at this as kind of a challenge, but I also fundamentally think we have a problem there. I think that there is no need to future-proof your amateur radio, and I will attempt to explain why. Radios, even old radios, can be adapted with accessories to utilize things like digital communication. Strap a computer on the side of this thing, give it a serial connection, bing, bang, boom. Uh, you can do data, JSA call, FT8, whatever. It's not necessarily the point of which mode of operation, but you can do it. You can take audio out. You can feed audio in. It's a radio. That's it. You're doing digital, right? Even old radios can do this. So that's future proofing is like how you use it right from my point of view at this at this rudimentary level but going back a step even old radios do single sideband voice ssb upper and lower sideband right and also do cw continuous wave morse code so you don't need to change anything at all if you like your older radio the only thing future proofy would be how reliable some of the older radios are if you are Someone that finds a, a, an older radio that they like. I'm thinking the tech prepper in my head. He loves the older Yaesu, HF, QRP, and mobile radios. Well, good news for him is those are plentiful. They're like the Mazda Miata of amateur radio. You can just have a stockpile of those, and if one dies, chuck it out and go get the next one from your spares bin. Realistically, though, when people say future-proof, that can mean a lot of things. It could mean I want a radio that's not going to fail on me. It means I want the latest and greatest technology that incorporates audio filtering that will lower the noise and pull out some of those human voices. Those are all specifics of that fundamental question of future-proofing. But at its rudimentary level, future-proofing isn't something we necessarily have to worry ourselves with because there are always hams who will create an adapter or a solution or a device that will allow you to kind of bring it up to the capabilities we expect to be using today. And today, a lot of people are using FT8 for making contacts. Uh, and that's where you see a lot of the activity, particularly like DX, expeditions, all that fun stuff. So you, you don't have to worry so much about that. Now, older radios are not going to necessarily be as sensitive as a receiver as some of the newer radios. And they also may have quirks with frequency stability where they may walk around a little bit depending on what type of technology and parts they used at the time. So upgrading to say like an SDR based radio is not a bad idea, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to. I think that's kind of what I want to say here. As always, everybody's got a laptop kicking around and if you have access to a used amateur radio that's very cheap or possibly free from a club or whatever, it's probably best to avail yourself to bring that up to speed. You're gonna learn a lot going through that process than it is to walk down the street or go online line and buy some brand new whiz bang hf radio i've always found that much like when you started driving having kind of a beater ish car is a good way to go or a car that you bought cheap and repaired it yourself brought it up to driving respectability drove it for a while figured out what you like and didn't like your personal preferences and then in the future go buy a nicer car used maybe or whatever depending on how much money you got and the same thing should apply to amateur radio assuming that via my videos and other people on youtube that you can fully understand not only what the radio does but what your preferences will be as a newcomer to amateur radio is incredibly difficult to do always see if you can start cheap get the ball rolling and then once you learn what your preferences are or at least get a better handle of how this whole thing works then go in and start making bigger buying decisions and before I wrap things up, amateur radio, as I've said now for about a year or so, ready for kind of like a dust up. We, we've seen a lot of these really powerful SDR radios hit the scene. All the major manufacturers are making SDRs. And a lot of them, I'm using Flex as an example, Anon, uh, the Hermes. Hermes is actually a really good radio if you wanted to get into full SDR control where you 
plug the radio into a network and you access it via computer. Very inexpensive too, like 450 bucks to get into this space and get a really good receiver. The Hermes Light is, uh, is top notch. I'm expecting that we're going to see a lot more of that and we're going to see interesting integrations of uh, how you take something like that, that network connected device, and bring user control into it. Not just necessarily your phone, not being tethered to a network per se, but perhaps creating a, a localized network with smaller nodes like user controls that all integrate together and they're going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Again, this is just futurist BS talk. But some of these SDRs are changing so rapidly and faster than discrete RF components can at this point that I expect we're going to see some pretty interesting radios coming down the line in the next two to three years that you may want to just bide your time with a G90. Australian audiences, 20-watt limit. The G90 is not bad. See if you can get a used one of those or perhaps even buy one new. And you're going to be fine. Like, there it is. There's your HF radio until you either upgrade your license or some of these new radios come out. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And as always, just to wrap this up, Hams are a, an adaptive group of people. We can take a, a pile of junk and we can bring it up to today's operating standards and make contacts with it, right? So maybe don't get so concerned about this future proofing and get more concerned on let's just get something in the air, effective, cheap, and start to use it and start to build those full, you know, get those folds in the noggin there in understanding how to practically use it. That's always going to be more valuable than buying the most expensive thing that you don't really understand how to use yet because you're not in that mind space to be able to grow with the radio. I hope that makes sense. I get that question a lot. What is the radio I can buy now and I can grow with it? That doesn't really exist. Uh, oftentimes, it's best to just get what you can now bump your head up against what you may like or don't like or reach the limit of what it physically can do and then start to upgrade. I don't mean you got to take five steps. I mean like get one that's good enough, get on the air, and then look at something bigger down the line. And then, yeah, give that radio, gift it to a new ham to encourage them to learn the same way you did. I'm Josh KI6NAZ. If this was helpful to you, I would like to hear about it. Post in the comments below. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much. 73.